Hello everyone, this is Daniel Patrick from Cibula Tech and OldRC.com and today's video is going to be a general vacuum forming video for anybody who's trying to make stuff at home and it's for people who kind of already have their own machine designed or are considering making their own design. I, I hope you'll get something out of this and no one will feel insulted uh, by what I'm about to say in this video. So hang on, here we go. Alright, so for most of you who have already got a machine at home, I would argue your machine design is wrong. Well, why do I say it's wrong? It's because you copied an amateur's design that you saw on YouTube or someplace else, and that person copied another amateur before him, and it goes on back probably for decades where another amateur copied another amateur. And your design, whether you really know it or not, comes from probably the back of popular science, popular mechanics back in the 60s and 70s. You would send off a check to a PO box and you'd get plans back and you would design your own machine and with the modern age, people adapted those same designs, maybe a little more automation, maybe a little more fancy because of technologies improved, but that same design is what everybody's continuing to perpetuate on and on into the modern YouTube era. And a lot of the people who are doing this have no professional experience doing vacuum forming, so they don't know better ways of doing stuff and they don't know the, the problems that can really uh, come frequently and how you could resolve them fairly easily, I think, in what I'm gonna kinda show you today. So, the design that most of you have really is a design of what's called a skin packaging machine. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I'm betting you have for design, something similar. You have a sheet, something like this, with a whole bunch of holes in it. So you can see my monitor behind me there through all the holes. You have a steel sheet or a cookie sheet I've seen or a wooden board with a whole lot of holes in it. And that's okay if you're skin packaging, but it's not really the best design if you're doing serious vacuum forming at all, more than just one or two of a part. If you're trying to make four or five of a part, Having a better design, I think, is going to make things a lot easier for you. So, skin packaging machines uh, are look generally look something similar to this. This one's been adapted over for RC cars, and one of the big things about it is the um, you don't see this big perforated sheet on there. It would have had something similar like this on the machine, but instead, there's something you don't have on your machine. And that is a way to secure your form, buck, mold, whatever you want to call it, onto your machine. So that when you're done forming, the plastic comes off, but your mold stays behind. Now, I will admit, some of the cases of people having problems with, it's not because it doesn't necessarily would stay behind, but secure down. It's just poor design of the mold. You got too big of undercuts and it wraps around and encases the, the mold and now you're, you're done, you're stuck. But for a lot of people, if you had a way to secure things down, it would make your life a lot easier. This is a more modern um, photo of a skin packaging machine. And skin packaging machines are generally used for packaging retail items. This is a skin packaged part for RC cars. And what would normally happen in a place that was doing skin packaging, you would have a big cardboard sheet like this that has this artwork repeated on it, however many times it would fit onto the machine. And you'd put it down, and then you put all the individual parts down on top of it. You'd have a roll of film over here. It gets brought into the frame, heated up, dropped down, shrunk down right onto the stuff. You take that over to a die cutting machine and it cuts everything out into nice individual little parts. And then ship it off and it gets hung on a retail hook someplace. That's what a skin packaging machine is for. It doesn't really have a design consideration for securing stuff down to the platform which is what you need on your machine when you're doing real vacuum forming, is a way to secure your form down onto the machine. So I wanna give you maybe a suggestion in what you can do, modification or a new design that would allow you to secure your stuff down to your machine so that it's easier hopefully to remove when you're done forming. And that is this specific little shape here, a keyhole shape. I would hope you could put a keyhole shape somewhere in the middle or off to the side a little bit, or even multiple ones if you're gonna try and run multiple parts at the same time into your platform. And if you're running a metal sheet, you may need to have a, a brace part, a block, a wood or something underneath it that has the same cutout in it 
so that you don't have too much give in your surface area. If you're running a board, you're probably just fine, depending on how thick your board is. But what that's gonna allow you to do is now with your molds and designs that you've got, you can put a bolt or a wood screw or something that's got gonna have a good hold into your form. And then you can just lower that design, whoop, whoop, wrong way there. Um, you can lower that design right down into the hole and then slide it right over and kind of lock it and secure it in place. So when you're done forming your part, you can lift it right off. Now, if you have problems still because your mold buck design is got too steep of angles and the parts just hanging on there for dear life, you and you need a, a big work area, you can still slide it over, take it off, go take it somewhere else and remove the part from there with different tools you may need to get it out of there. So I would encourage you to consider something like this in your design of your machine. And it will, even if you don't need it, if you've got a well-designed thing like this is something that would probably release from the plastic really easy. But if you don't need it, you at least have that option going forward. If you make a new design that is a little more complex, you have that ability to secure things. Because you just see so many videos on YouTube with people having problems trying to remove the part. Even Adam Savage uh, from Mythbusters, who has his tested channel, has had this problem. And he's got some homemade vacuum forming machine. And the other day, he, well, months ago, he re, you know reworked his machine. And he, was, he didn't improve his machine for how to hold down stuff. And he talks about how he struggles to get the stuff off. And one of the options he could have done was re redesign it at that time so he could have secured things down. Um, it's kind of frustrating when you're, when you're someone like me and you do this for your living, you see these people struggling on stuff. And it, it is really is, like I said at the beginning, everybody's copying someone else who really doesn't do it for a living and you know consistently and they don't know that they're really not doing it the best way and you you want to help people so that's what i'm trying to do here today is hopefully give you some inspiration or advice on how you can make a better vacuum forming machine at home and get better results with it and you know not make a youtube video where everyone's like oh why is he struggling so much with this part it's really sad to see so uh, if you have any comments leave them below if you do make some sort of design change similar to this or something else and you want to offer that up to other people leave a link to a video or a website down below in the comments i'll be more than happy to let you share that there because i, I think getting some design changes into the homemade area of vacuum forming is probably a little overdue. There's a lot of bad info that's kind of out there, or at least not the best info that's out there. So thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.